Hey guys, I have a my 2013 Honda Ridge Line Sport model behind me. Today I'm going to be putting the Traxta two-inch lift kit. It's a front and rear strut spacer with new sway bar links. And I looked online for a while and I couldn't really find a video on how to do it. I feel pretty confident that I can do it, but I decided to make this maybe help someone else out if they go ahead and try to do the lift kit on their truck by themselves. So, what I have here, I went on fatbobsgarage.com and I was able to uh, download a PDF and print out instructions with pictures. Actually, that's pretty cool, especially since I didn't buy it from uh, Fat Bobs. And they give you, that's the box, they give you the front strut spacers with bolts and nuts, the rear strut spacers, which look a little thinner than the front. And the new sway bar links, because the new ones or the old ones are going to do short or too long. I don't remember which one. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to jack up the front of the truck, take the tires off, and then uh, I'll talk to you in a minute. All right. So, got the wheel off. It was, I believe, seven eighths for the lug nuts. Jacked it up have a jack stand and always make sure to block your rear wheels so you don't go sliding anywhere um, I ran into my first little problem I have a three-quarter inch set just for that and it's in standard and I believe it's a metric size because inch and a half is the closest thing I have and that doesn't fit too good and I don't like that I feel like I'm gonna strip that out and we're gonna have issues I also if you noticed right here that little gap this was punched in and I guess it locks the nut in place. I took a hammer and a flathead screwdriver and I straightened that out just so I could turn it. But what I think I'm gonna have to do now is I'm gonna punch that back in and then I'm gonna get a separate jack to support the bottom of this. And once I unbolt the strut, I can, you know, controlled, let it down slowly because I believe you take that out just so it doesn't drop and rip the, the CV axle out of the boot and I'm gonna get a lot of damage if you do that. So for right now, I'm gonna get a jack to put underneath um, the lower control arm, right by the ball joint. I'm gonna jack it up a little bit. I have to release, take this bolt out right here, just so this line doesn't get kinked up anywhere. And I'm probably gonna take some rags and lay them on top of that rear um, motor mount and right here where that CV boot is, because I don't want if anything happens, I don't want to rip this boot or that boot because then that's another $100 that I have to spend and I don't want to do that. So jack it up, take that bolt out. I'm going to go up top. There's plugs and I can unbolt this strut and let the whole thing down. So I'm going to do that. I'll get back to you. Hey guys, so took the sway bar link off and that was definitely a big pain in the ass. Um, this truck's relatively new only five years old but um fucking jersey it was from pa and i'm in jersey so the you know the rust belt so this one i try to drill out because they have a little allen head in it that you can put a you know allen key in and it's a 17 millimeter bolt uh nut on that side um it took me almost two hours to get this off um i tried drilling it and eventually i resorted to a uh, little propane heat which doesn't work that great. Um, so that's how I get the top one off the bottom when I was trying to do heat, but it wouldn't work. So I took a hacksaw blade because you can't get a full hacksaw in there. And I cut most of the way through the bolt. And then I just applied very heavy pressure with my uh, ratchet and I was able to snap it, snap it off. So that's done. I took the brake line mount off that's a 12 millimeter bolt and um since i don't have someone here to help me lower it down or i don't want to damage these cv axles or the boots i have a jack set up underneath the lower control arm where the ball joint is so i have pressure on that i'm going to go up top and take uh i believe there's three bolts or three nuts off that this uh strut mounts to and then it should come down and I'll be able to uh, put the um, the spacer on and put it back in. Upper strut mounts are right up here. This is 
the wiper cowl right here and there's three black plastic plugs on top I just use the flathead screwdriver there's a little indent on them Whatever. where is it right there so you can get the uh, the flathead in there and just pop them off and then right down in here you have three nuts it is 14 millimeter you need to use a deep socket because the studs stick up farther and these are very very easy to loosen um, they're up here out of the elements so they don't get corrosion or anything on them so I'm gonna take these three nuts off and then go down and lower my whole assembly down and that should give me enough room to put the spacer on top and put it back in so I almost forgot there's two bolts with nuts on the end over here we have to remove those two um, it is a 15 16th yeah, 15 16th and um, crack the nuts loose first and I thought this was gonna be a nightmare just because how the sway bar links went but these uh, broke loose relatively easy I had to use a breaker bar on them just because they're tight but um broke broke free relatively easy and like I said I have my jack underneath this to kind of hold it up stop it from you know falling down too fast so I'm gonna take this last one out and pull the strut out another small issue um, I got the strut out of the truck and I went to put the spacer on and I realized that this isn't tight. Um, I have a small gap down here because the top of this uh, is hitting this. So I went on Facebook and I made some posts and people got back to me like right away, which is which is why I love the internet and Facebook and the Ridgeline groups and stuff online. Um, so I'm just gonna cut off the top of this so it fits better. I wasn't 100% sure, I just wanted to see if anyone else had the same issue. So I'm gonna cut these points off on all three of them and then uh, mount this. Guys, so I cut the heads off of these uh, studs that were hitting and I'm using the uh, stock strut mount bolts to bolt this back down to the strut because if I use these down here, they give you these. Up here, these would only catch by like two or three threads if you install them up here. So that's gonna be the right way to do it. And that's gonna go up top once you put this back in the truck into uh, where it goes. So my phone ran out of battery last night so I didn't get the, uh, anything else for me putting the strut back in. But um, what I did was kinda of work the hub over so I could sit the strut down on the tie rod. And then I was able to go up top and reach my hand under and pull this up and get uh, the nuts started. And um, I kind of used a, uh, a long needle nose plier to set them on top of the nut and give it a little spin. And then I took my 14 millimeter deep socket with my extension and I was able to get a good spin on them. And you want to get the top of this tight first. So this is set where it has to be. And then once you go down below, you can kind of line up uh, the bottom strut mount with the, uh, the hub and uh, slide that in. And I used a uh, 3 8 extension through the holes to kind of work them and get my bolts back through. And you wanna make sure, sure those are nice and tight. And then um, I threw the sway bar in. And that was, that was kind of hard just because I'm doing one side at a time. I had the other side on the ground and I didn't have the sway bars on the other side uh, loose. So I had to kind of really push down on the sway bar to get the bottom or pull up whatever I did just to get the bottom uh, sway bar mount in. But I got that in, I tightened those up. These are 17 millimeter uh, bolt uh, nuts. And once that was on, I uh, I put my brake line, I bolted that back in. And then I also had to unclip the ABS line. And it's just two little plastic clips, one there, and then one over on this side right down there. And with that being done, I tightened everything up real good, made sure it was nice and tight. And I uh, put the tire back on and tighten that down so the fronts are done and then right now i'm currently working on the rear i started this one already um, i'm almost done with this one so i'm going to go over the passenger side how to do everything on that side just so we all know um but I, like i said i ran out of my phone ran out of battery last night so i wasn't able to capture me putting that strut back in uh buttoning that side up so i'm going to finish up on this side and then i'll start the video over when i'm starting to go on the other side all right so i'm getting started in the back uh, passenger side jack the truck up have it on jack stands front wheels are chalk still so we're all we're all safe um, first things first back here we have to remove the lower 
uh, sway bar mount, and that's a 14 millimeter bolt. And I believe a 3 16 Allen key that goes in there um, to keep it uh, sturdy. In my case, the other side, the Allen uh, key is stripped out. And what I ended up having to do is I sprayed, um, I sprayed the bolt with WD-40, and then I wire brushed the, uh, the threads. And then I'm gonna take my impact gun here with the 14 millimeter uh, deep socket on it. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna back it off, run it on, back it off, run it on, back it off, run it on, and I'm gonna do that until it comes off. Um, the front ones I was able to just uh, lock some channel locks back here, hold it still. And then I actually had to cut off one of them. They do not give you new rear rear sway bar links. So I do not feel like having to pay for those. And the top mount of this is like all the way back here. And that would be a pain in the butt to try to loosen up if I do snap that and have to replace it. So I'm going to go get that cranked off and I'll be right back. All right, so I got this sway bar link off. I had to actually, I was able to get some small, you don't know those channel locks behind this metal tab and lock on. There's a metal ring on the sway bar. This thing right here, I was able to lock onto that and not destroy the boot. And I had to back off and go on and back off and go on um, with my impact for a little bit in order to work it free. Um, so now there's three bolts under here. One, two, three. They are 14 millimeter. Those have to get loosened, um, taken out. And then there's the bolt, a bolt down here, which holds the strut in to this uh, lower control arm. This is a 15 16 I have a half inch breaker bar that I used last time and it broke free uh, relatively easily. And then over here is this bolt and that's a 7 8 and that holds the lower control arm to this whole assembly, this knuckle right here. So I'm gonna take all this out and I'll get back. All right, so I got those three bolts out. I took that bolt out and I took that bolt out. This you have to get a uh, like a pry bar and get it right behind here and pry that off and this should just pop right free. I know this whole thing's loose. And in order to get this out of here, what I did on the other side was I pulled this and pushed that all the way up. With my right arm, I held the strut up to where it's supposed to go came down here with my left hand and pushed that down and took the bottom out first and I was able to get it out. I believe the bottom is a smaller piece in the top so it's easier to get the bottom out first. So this is gonna come out and then the new spacer is gonna get bolted up into here. And when the strut goes back in, it's gonna do a 180 and be facing the other way, so. All right guys, so I took the strut out. I put the spacer in, this gets bolted up with the, uh, the stock bolts that came out. Um, I tightened this first, so I made that sure, make sure that was tight. And then I slid the strut in the same way I got it out. I kind of lined the top up, pushed the control arm way down, got the bottom in, and I was able to pull it up and align it with the holes, um, the studs and the spacer. And then I threaded those uh, the nuts on and tightened all that down. And that everything up here is a 14 millimeter. And then, came down here and I put this bolt back in and it's easier if you have a jack and you can jack it up and kind of push this in and out and I took a 3 8 um, extension and a screwdriver and I lined it up in there I was trying to pry the eyelid over and then once you get it lined up you can just push the bolt right in and I hand tightened it I didn't crank it down and then over here uh, same thing with the jack you jack it up this one I had to push real hard on the control arm over that way and then with my other hand jack it up so it went around this thing and I saw how to use my hammer and a pry bar and once I got it kind of lined up it wouldn't go down further so I pounded over here with the hammer to kind of push this whole thing down into it and then once again I used my uh, 3 8 extension and a uh, flathead screwdriver to kind of pull it down and get it lined up where it's supposed to be and um, these are just uh, not hand tight, but I didn't tighten them down at the breaker bar yet. But everything up there is done. So I'm gonna crank these down, put that sway bar link back on with the uh, a 14 millimeter nut, and then 
this side will be all done. All right, guys. And that is the finished product. Up next, I'm gonna go. Uh, I have to. Uh, I have to get an alignment done, just because the the front spacer throws everything out of alignment a little bit. So always a good thing to do. And while I'm at it, getting the alignment done, I'm gonna get some uh, some Cooper AT3 um, all terrains. I believe I think I'm gonna go like 265, 60 R18. I know I can fit bigger but I really don't want to. I mean, this gives it a nice stance um, the way it is. So I don't want to have to cut welds to make the tires fit or have any rubbing issues or anything like that. Um, and I still want to keep a little bit a little bit of the good gas mileage that I get with it. But um, so that's all done. Um, the tracks, the kit was pretty straightforward to install. The uh, instructions from Fat Bob's Garage helped a lot as well to kind of put me in the right path. Um, I'm not a mechanic, I'm mechanically inclined and it took me about I guess 12 hours, including filming all of this for you guys. Uh, I ha I would have it would have been quicker if I didn't live in a rusty or a salty area where I had a fight with corrosion the whole like way through because the sway bar has definitely added like two or three hours, maybe four hours on top of you know what I had to deal with. So if you're in like a southern state, then it's going to work out better for you, and you should be able to get done within a day. But um, I did it all by myself, basic hand tools, some an air gun and an electric impact is like you know thing like that that i use but it's a basic toolkit is what i um is what i had some flat bars and stuff so hopefully uh hopefully this video helps somebody out um i know it'll help me out if i watch this first but um well thanks for watching and uh let me know what you think in the comments thank you